Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Anybody knows what happens in Faith School? <laughs> faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, not weaker, and I learn how not to fail, not to quit. I learn how to be an overcomer, a winner, one who triumphs. You know, God doesn't get glory in your failures. I know some people try to say some of this, but it's just simply not true. He's the God of victory. He's the God of the overcomer. And he wants to see you triumph. He wants to see you win again and again. He gets glory out of that in your life. And so regardless of what's been going on in your life or how many times you've lost, you're still alive. You're still breathing. God's still on the throne. It can change. It can, it, it can be turned around. And it begins by you just taking a stance in your heart. Say it out loud with me. I'm not a loser. I'm not a victim. I'm not a failure. I'm a winner. I'm an overcomer. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we agree about this. We agree with you. What you the, you're the one that has said this about us. And we agree with it and we receive it. And we ask you to minister more of this to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look at Mark 8 and let's uh, continue. We're actually uh, toward the end of, of, of the study on this number 12 individual account of the healing of the blind man at Bethsaida in verse uh, 22. Mark 8, 22. Jesus came to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man to him, and they besought him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw aught. He looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. So as a result of a combination of natural organic material, spit, like we said before, DNA is in that and a whole host of other things. The, um, and, and we saw in John 9 how that Jesus put spit and dirt and we know from Genesis our whole body is made out of dirt and we know a lot of it's water through this organic material and the anointing that now Jesus is ministering to the man by the laying on of hands, something happened in the man's physical eyes. The actual eye, eyeball or, or the nerves to it, whatever, something changed so that he can see and he couldn't see before. But his sight is imperfect. And so this is what you could, you could call this a, a partial healing, I prefer to call it a partial reception because what Jesus is ministering to him is not imperfect and not partial, and yet he hadn't received all of it. We know this to be the case because what does Jesus do immediately when he says, yeah, I can see, but strange, it's like People look like trees walking around. And so what happens without any delay, Jesus put his hands again. I mean, immediately he says, come here. <laughs> put his hands on him. Why do that? Well, the same thing that got him from total darkness to partial sight, more of that will get him from partial sight to perfect sight. Amen. Right? Right? And so don't let anybody confuse you about these things. Um, you've, you've seen people, as they got some improvement in an area and, and they didn't see it all happen immediately and they're like, well, I guess maybe this is all it was God's will for me to have. No, it's not. No, you got to keep going. 
Through faith and endurance, you inherit the promises. Uh, so many stop uh, too prematurely, if you will. They, they stop too quickly. And again, this is a faith issue. If you can be discouraged, the enemy will see to it that enough comes your way that you get discouraged and you give up and quit. And you'll find that the weaker your faith is, the quicker you are to quit. The weaker your spirit is and the weaker your faith is, the quicker you'll throw up your hands and go, there's no use, you know, no need to keep on, just, you know, okay, we tried. No, but strong faith just won't quit. <laughs> it won't quit. It, it can have 103 setbacks and it'll shake itself and go, uh-uh, <laughs> no, nah, the Lord gave this to me. <laughs> Jesus bought and paid for this for me. I'm going to have it. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to experience it. And you make up your mind that whatever it takes, you're not going to quit. Somebody say, I, I, refuse, to I refuse to quit. See, through faith and endurance. You know, uh, Hebrews talks about this. In fact, uh, hold your place here and look at Hebrews 10. This is actually leading up to that great 11th chapter of Hebrews. It's the very end of that 10th chapter in the 35th verse, Hebrews 10, 35. He said, cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. What does that mean? It pays off big. What pays off big? When you don't give up. What does casting away your confidence mean? It means you were confident you were stoked. You were stirred up about it. You were after it. Don't let passage of time or difficulties cause you to back off and cool off and, and give up and say, well, I, I thought it was going to be okay, but I, I guess, you know, who knows? Must not have been God's will. Lies, lies, lies. Don't let the devil lie to you. You have need, verse, verse 36, are you there? You have need of patience. Now, we already talked about, what is that word? Endurance. endurance. That's the word for endurance. Class, look at each other. Help each other out. Said, you, you need some endurance. You, need some <laughs> you got to. <laughs> Did the Bible say that? You need, you need endurance. huh? Let's tell the rest of the class all around the world. You need endurance. You need endurance. You need endurance. And you should say, okay. <laughs> all right, I'll take me some right now. Huh? <laughs> right? What, it, does anybody know what endurance is? If everything always happened instantaneously, you wouldn't need any endurance. Right? If you always saw the whole thing just manifest, boom, 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 you would need no endurance. You wouldn't need scriptures continually referring to you, you know. I mean, remember... How many remember Galatians where it talks about, you know, don't, get, don't be weary in doing good and well because in due season you'll reap if you don't faint, <laughs> right? If everything, if when you sow the seed, boom, there's a harvest. You don't need verses like that, right? But we know even in the natural, you don't plant a watermelon seed and then say, back up, back up, get out of the way. <laughs> It's, it happens a little at a time. Everybody say a little at a time. A little. A little at a time. That, that's how seeds work. And we're told that the Word of God is the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. And uh, whether you've realized it or not, every time we have a faith school, that's what I'm doing. I'm going. <laughs> huh? Huh? I'm looking for some good ground, hallelujah. And you want to let that seed get in you? And then we're pouring water on it. We're pouring water is more of the teaching of the word. And that it doesn't just all happen overnight. You, there oftentimes you'll see dramatic changes in things, but the big changes usually happen progressively over a period of time. And then it's like a, you know, a snowball. It just keeps getting bigger and and bigger and bigger 
God is so good. If you'll stay with him, he can get you to some places you never imagined you'd be. Things on a scale you never imagined you'd be a part of or doing. But you got to stay with it. Say it again. You need Need. endurance. 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 Got to have this endurance, this stick to it. it And can you see, that's faith. Why would you stay with something when other people are giving up on it? Why would you stay with something when people are quitting right and left? You must be persuaded, right? That God said it, that it's right, that it's working no matter what you see. That's a big component of faith. That's why the scripture said, through faith and, King James says, patience, through faith and endurance, you inherit the promises. And it was talking about Abraham, and it goes on to say, I believe it's the 15th verse there, after he had patiently endured. So this time it uses the word endure, even in the King James. After he had patiently endured, he obtained. Hallelujah. He got it. He got it. It didn't happen. What was talking about with him and with uh, Isaac, it didn't happen in a month or a year. It didn't happen in 10 years. But he stayed with it. And he got it. He was persuaded. And he was persistent. And he got it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reckon that will work for you too, class. Yes. You know it will. You know it will. Come back to the passage in, in Mark 8 again. The man looked up and said, verse 24, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes. Just because somebody prayed and didn't get results, that does not mean it wasn't God's will. Do you remember, the, we, we talked about this already, and we'll look at some of these in time to come, but the man that had the, uh, actually this one's in front of us, the man that had the uh, boy that had seizures. And he brought him to Jesus' disciples and they did their best to minister to the boy and he got no deliverance. But then later, Jesus came down from the mount and ministered to him and got him set free. So the, the efforts that the disciples went through uh, and, and their lack of results didn't prove the will of God. And so when they asked Jesus later, they said, well, why couldn't we get him set free? He said, because of your unbelief. (laughs) Unbelief. (laughs) So even if you hang out personally with Jesus, (laughs) right? (laughs) You can still slip into unbelief while he's up on the mount. Uh, No, just because somebody prayed or somebody ministered, or somebody laid hands. I've heard people say, well, I've had, you know, I've had a dozen people lay hands on me and pray, so I guess it's just not the will of God. Well, you guessed wrong. I said, you guessed wrong. It is the will of God for you to be healed and to be delivered. And so Jesus immediately ministers to this man again, and he receives the rest of what he needed. Let me read this to you from another uh, translation here. For the second time, Weymouth said, verse 25, he put his hands on the man's eyes and the man looked steadily, recovered his sight and saw everything distinctly. Uh, The TEV, today's English says, Jesus placed his hands again on the man's eyes. This time the man looked intently. His eyesight returned and he saw everything clearly. You can see definitely the working of miracles. You can see it in Jesus uh, taking the man out of the town. You can see it in him spitting on him. You can see it in him putting his hand. And then you you can see it in telling him, okay, look again. Focus. And the Bible said the man looked intently. The message says he looked hard. (laughs) The living Bible says he stared intently. And his sight was completely restored. I like what the Amplified says. It says, the man looked intently. He fixed his eyes on definite objects. You know, just not using your eyeballs for years (laughs) could make them, you know, the the muscles and and all that work look weak. And so Jesus put his hands again on him. 
and says, okay, look, look, focus. <laughs> and he's a looking. How many understand? The man's got to be thrilled almost out of his skin that he can even see, right? And now as he's looking, it just gets sharper and sharper and sharper. That ain't no tree. That's my cousin Jim. <laughs> he can see that's red hair. That's a blue robe. Oh, glory to God. But again, can you see throughout the, just, just what, four little verses here, but can you see progression? There's so much about progression and, and, and increasing here because there was a partial reception and then a, a partial seeing and then more reception and then better and better seeing until it is crystal and clear. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do we serve the same God yes. today? Yes. Does he work the same way today? Then we, we must not just be fixated on 100% instantaneous. Yeah, we'll take that every opportunity we get, right? But with a lot of people in their minds, it's either that or nothing. It's either instantaneous miracle, 100% restoration or nothing happened. But it's not just all up to the perfect ministry from God. There is the reception of us and how we receive. And like we gave you the example of the woman with the crippling arthritis and also the man that was given up to die isn't it better that they recovered, even if it took months, than to just say, well, must not have worked, and give up and die? Die young? Die early? No. God will show you if you'll wait on Him, if you'll be positive instead of negative, if you'll be open instead of closed. He'll show you, take this step. And it may seem like a tiny step to you. It may seem so minuscule that, well, what good will that do? Well, just listen. Will you just listen and do what he tells you to do? Take that little step and, oh, man, something will happen. How many will take something over nothing? Yeah. Any day yes. of the week, something will happen. Then you know what he'll do? He'll show you, take a little bit bigger step. More will happen. More will happen. This is how the justified in Christ are to live. When he says the just shall live by faith, the just shall walk by faith. Do you know what walking is made up of? Steps. Right? Steps. Romans talks about steps of faith of our father Abraham. Everybody say steps of faith. Steps of faith. Steps of faith. Not necessarily flying leaps, right? You know, everybody wants to be faith Superman, right? You got nothing and then you go, whoo. <laughs> you go from nothing to everything right now. Well, see, that's the impatience of your flesh. When does your flesh want everything? Right now. Now. Right now. All of it. Now. But so much is gained in learning how to walk with him step by step. A lot of people that get things through gifts of the Spirit instantaneously, sadly, a lot of them lose them because they don't know how they got them. And if you don't know how you got it, you can lose it. The way you keep it is the same way you got it. Now you'll see this, look, look at this next phrase here. It says that, uh, verse 25, after that he put his hands again on his eyes and made him look up. He was restored and saw every man clearly. So the miracle is, is complete. Verse 26, Jesus sent him away to his house. He said, so 
You go, to, go home, go to your house, but don't go into the town. Wow. And the King James says, don't tell it to any in the town. Man, he was about done with this town, <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> now you're laughing, but didn't we go back and read what, he, what did Jesus say? Woe to you. Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida, because if all the things that had been done in you were done in Tyre and Zidon, and he went on another time to talk about even Sodom and Gomorrah, they'd have repented radically in sackcloth and ashes. So why would he tell him, don't go back in town? Same reason he took him out of town to start with. And here's something else you can see. I, I actually know of numerous cases where people came and were in wonderful, faith-filled, healing crusades and meetings and had a miracle and went back home and their preachers and everybody around them told them that all that Holy Spirit stuff is of the enemy and, and all that's passed away and actually talked them out of their miracle talked them out of their healing, and they started getting worse and, and regressed right back into it over a period of time. And then the people around them said, see there, there was nothing to that. Are you blind? Something happened, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, if it was God, then they could have never lost it. You base that on what? That's, nothing else is that way. Anything you receive from God, you can walk away from. You can reject him. You can leave it. You can give it up. Didn't the Bible say, hold fast that which you have? More than one place. I'm quoting Revelation right now. Hold fast. Everybody said out loud, class. Hold fast, hold fast. that which you have. Why would the Lord have to tell you that? Because something is going to be trying to take it away from you. Why would you have to be told Lay hold and hold fast. Hold on tightly to what you have received, to what you have been given. Hold on to it. Why tell the man, don't go back in that town? Now, I guess his house wasn't in the town because he told him to go home. But don't go back in the town and don't tell it to anybody around there. Why? Because... He, he said that because the Spirit of God prompted him to say that. And why would the Spirit of God prompt him? Because, no doubt, those people would have mocked it. They would have made fun of it. They would have disputed and rejected it, criticized it. And if he would listened to him, they could have talked him out of his healing. It is not far-fetched. I have seen it happen before. They could have said, oh, now, we know that some of these folks were saying Jesus is doing these things by the prince of the devil. Don't you remember that? People were saying it. They couldn't deny a miracle happened, so they're saying the devil did it. Whew. You can see some reasons why Jesus would have been so put out with them, right? And why he, he, he would take the man out of town to minister to him. So, uh, he doesn't want the man going back into a place, into a synagogue or a church, where some confused pastor is going to tell him that what he got is of the devil. And that they'd rather be blind than to have something from the devil. The devil is not healing people. Come on, are y'all listening to me? He's the one making people sick. The devil is not healing people. He's not restoring people. Not then, not now. So even in receiving the healing, Jesus took him out of the unbelief and out of that ungodly environment. And then after he, he received through multiple ministry, received some of it and then got the rest of it and then got all of it. And the Lord's helping him to keep it. He said, don't go back in that town. Don't even tell it to people. There, there's some folks, you should not tell them your miracle. Because all they're going to do is make fun of it. 
All they're going to do is try to tear it apart. We need to be led by the Spirit in these things. Have we learned anything from the healing ministry of Jesus in these weeks? He is so, so good. Lift your hands and give him thanks. Father, we thank you. You are the best. You are so amazing. Let me lead you in a prayer class. Sit out loud. Father God, Father God I, receive I receive your words, your, words, your, spirit, your spirit, your ministry. Your ministry. Show, me Show me how to yield to these things, to to these things. minister these same things, minister. receive these same things receive. in our lives, our lives. Now. now. Get glory to yourself glory to you. in healings and miracles. In our lives, in our lives. Now. now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Do you remember the Bible said one of the signs that would follow believers, not just preachers, believers, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Can we see similar things to this in our life today? Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Well, that's it for today, but we're just on number 12. We've got more healing accounts to get to. Come back next week. We'll see you right here in Faith School. Really enjoyed being with you again this week here at Faith School. Uh, there is so much to learn, isn't it, about faith and about receiving and ministering. I want to say thank you to all of our partners. I know many of you uh, support us uh, in spirit and in natural means. And I want to tell you that we're joining in faith with you for harvest on your seed. The scripture said in Romans 4.12 that, that we walk in those same steps of faith like our father Abraham. Uh, like we're talking in class today, don't think you just have to receive everything all at the same time. Put your faith on something that uh, seems doable to you. Reach that goal. And then put your faith on a bigger thing. Pay this off and then pay this off and keep making progress and increase in, in your sowing and increase in your vision. Uh, don't think you got to do it all in one big fell swoop. <laughs> Agree with me about this. Father, I ask that you reveal to our partners the steps of faith that they are to take that will get them from where they are now to where they want to be, to where you want them to be, to the greater, larger place. Thank you for bringing us into a broad place of freedom and abundance in you. We love you. Believe in God with you. Thank you for being hooked with us. We'll see you next time here in Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.